Yeah, Senator Dodd, love the way you answered. Okay, how do we translate it into action? Well, we're doing what you're doing. Obviously, I think the ideas of mobilizing, you've got a remarkable number of people here. One of the things that hasn't been talked about, at least while I've been here, is that, that uh, City Year in America, particularly, it's not just their volunteers, but what they've been able to produce as volunteers. Uh, there's a multiplier effect here that doesn't often get discussed. We talk about the number of people who actually volunteers, but what they're able to achieve in their communities. And it's good old one-on-one -on -one politics. Uh, you know, my colleagues, some of whom are familiar with this and would be for it anyway, others need to be reminded that there are people back home who care about it. <laughs> there's nothing like that as the best lobbying in the world gets done on a local level. And so by people in our communities who recognize the value of this, expressing uh, their support for these concepts and ideas, if not the very bills themselves, can really make a difference. And this is the time to do it. It's not going to get done in the next four weeks. It's not going to be a part of a continuing resolution. I'm not going to get my bills passed in the next three weeks. But we're going to have a new administration on January 20th, either McCain or Obama. In either case, I think there's going to be a greater receptivity to this idea. Let me say, as a Democrat, the last Republican administration that cared as much about this, I was sort of disappointed he wasn't reflected here. It was Ronald Reagan, of all people. Now, he was tough on some of the domestic issues. But every year, for eight years, he increased the funding for the Peace Corps uh, in those days. Uh, that was the only agency, I think, that got increased funding in those days, but he did. And in a sense, it, it's, uh, there's, and I think McCain gets this. Uh, and I'm obviously an Obama supporter, and I'm hoping he wins. Uh, but I think there's a real chance of McCain as well to tee this up and get it ready, define it in terms that can be a part of a national agenda. So that's the job between now and January. Isn't it possible, everybody focuses and says this is a cost issue, but isn't it possible? Cost not to do it. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I actually think it's a, there's a value return. Isn't it possible that we can identify those individuals that you talk about, over 55, who are extremely intelligent in energy, in finance, and send them out as an army and do financial literacy training uh, energy conservation and put a direct correlation to economic value on that? Of course, of course you can, and, that, and that's easier to do. I mean, I, one of the cases we made is the GI Bill, not a, not a service program, but that program was not inexpensive at the end of the 1940s. It's paid back eightfold the cost of that program in terms of the taxes paid by people whose education improved. In this case, we can directly identify cost savings as a result of what happens through like City Year and AmeriCorps at the domestic level at home. There's a direct correlation between reducing costs, assisting people getting on their feet, and creating economic opportunity. So we're going to make that case. So while there is a cost, we need to, in this case, remind people very quickly about the savings associated with this. How many slots would you like to see opened? I'm sorry? How many, how many more Peace Corps opportunities would you like to see? Well, look, I mean, now there's 5,000. When I was in, there was 17,000. I'll tell you a great story. Harris Walford told me this story. I don't think he told it until I walked out of the room for a minute. When John Kennedy uh, sent off that first group of volunteers on the South Lawn of the White House in 1961, he walked back into the Oval Office, and Harris Walford was in the room, uh, along with Sarge Schreiber and a few others. And, and President Kennedy turned to the small gathering. He said, this is the best idea. He said, you know, in the next 45 to 50 years, we'll have one million people who will have served overseas, bringing back the knowledge, the talent, the language skills, the ability to understand the world in which they live. There have only been 180,000 of us in, in, in 48 years uh, that have come back. So far short of Kennedy's words that day that a million uh, would be coming back to the country. And, and uh, we only have two Peace Corps programs in the Arab world, one in Jordan, one in Morocco. I mean, we ought to be engaging these communities, uh, not frightened of it, but engaging. As I said, you can't hate us if you know us. And there's no greater ambassador anywhere than some person out there trying to dig a well, build a school, <laughs> improve a road uh, that, that people get to know. And, uh, and so my hope is that uh, with an Obama presidency, I'm confident we can do it. I chair the committee dealing with the Peace Corps, and I fight every year uh, to get additional funding. My nephew is now working on chaining AIDS teachers in, uh, in Guyana, was in Africa for a year and a half uh, uh, as a Peace Corps volunteer. It's a remarkable, great experience. It's, it, obviously, today we're focusing on domestic issues, but service, it's service. And you'll find that Peace Corps volunteers, when they come back, engage in the domestic service of their country, in case after case. I 